G'day guys, welcome back to True Footy. Today we're continuing our series of doing individual videos on 2024 draft prospects. If you click up in the top right of this corner, you'll find a playlist to every player I've done so far, and I think we're up to about 17 or 18. So today we are doing Jesse Totoli, a small midfielder forward from Vic Metro, and a player that sort of bobbed up towards the back end of the season and sort of shot into top 30 calculations, and he's kind of held his place there at the moment. A player we can probably expect to see somewhere from the late teens to the late 20s at this current point in time. But let's talk about him as a prospect. So Totoli is a genuine midfielder forward, although I do expect at the next level, he's probably gonna be primarily a forward. That is probably where his best work is done. However, throughout the year, he has shown an ability to push up the ground, start at center bounces, and win plenty of the footy. I think there was a 35 possession performance there for the Northern Knights early this year, but he regularly hits the scoreboard as well. So he forms part of this little glut, I like the word glut, of uh, small forwards that have shown an ability around the same range of the draft to push up the ground and play midfield. Guys like Joe Berry and Ollie Hannaford come to mind. Jesse Totoli is of a similar sort of quality and positional type. There is a similarity to Hannaford in particular, I suppose, in the sense that he kind of came from nowhere to be considered a genuine lock to get drafted this year. What is said about Jesse Totoli is he's got this fierce competitive drive, which is often an important attribute for players making it at the elite level of sport. And so he turned up to preseason in 2024, fitter and stronger, and that resulted in better performances this year. He averaged 23 possessions a game for the Northern Knights this year, which implies a fair bit of midfield time in there. Normally small forwards don't get that much of the footy. And you can see in his highlights, he's standing at a lot of center bounces in particular, but he was still hitting the scoreboard as well. He also played all four games for Vic Metro in their title winning carnival this year. The other notable thing about Totoli is he's got a bit of a spunk about him, a bit of a swagger. He's got this real competitive drive where he's trying to get the best out of himself. And you can see that manifest on field. He's not exactly the biggest player, even at Coates Talent League. You can see he does give up a little little bit in terms of a size disadvantage. However, that competitiveness and the fact that he's a pretty good mark for his size, those things is combined and his improved endurance allowed him to perform really well at the under 18 level this year. So specifically in the Coates Talent League, he kicked 12 goals for the season, averaging 23.1 disposals, six score involvements and 3.9 clearances. So it's a very healthy amount of midfield time in there. In the carnival, he played four games, kicked three goals, averaged 15.2 disposals, seven marks and six score involvements. Unfortunately, he was injured during the combine so we don't actually have any testing results for him however I think you can conclude that he's got pretty good running capacity evidenced by his ability to run and accumulate the footy pretty consistently so to summarize his strengths and weaknesses as a player so we just talked about his ability to find the footy and uh, even for Vic Metro they threw him into a different role particularly in the side of where he played on a wing normally you see him at the center bounce or you will see him in the forward line. But that versatility and that ability to run and link up was another string he can add to his bow. He's also quite a creative player, kicks goals from tight congested situations like a typical small forward. So from that point of view, his forward craft and his goal sense is really strong. His running patterns are good. And there's also a demonstrated consistency with the Tolly as well. So in those seven games he played for the Northern Knights, like I said, he averaged 23 disposals, didn't have less than 15 possessions once and kicked a goal on every single occasion. In terms of his weaknesses, there's probably three that come to mind. First of all, probably set shot accuracy. That could probably be tied up a little bit. Being a creative player, he does tend to turn the ball over a little bit. I think that's partly down to him being creative and trying to aggressively force his team into a better position, but sometimes that results in turnovers. The other one that comes to mind is probably just the small frame. So he does play a fair bit in the midfield for the Northern Knights. I don't know how long it's going to take him to be able to play at that level at AFL level. Now, to be fair to him, I think he had a strength and size disadvantage in the Coates Talent League, but you can still see through sheer competitiveness, he was able to have a big impact. So potentially that will be something he could do at AFL level. I mean, there are smaller midfielders than him in terms of height, but you could just tell he gave up a little bit of in terms of size and strength. So will he find that at AFL level? It's possible. That being said, I have read that recruiters do see him primarily as a forward at the next level. In terms of his draft range, I think the earliest we'd likely see someone like a Jesse Totoli is towards the end of the teens picks. A lot of it will come down to need and whether teams need a small forward. Now there are teams that might have an appetite for a small forward in this year's draft, namely Fremantle has been linked to a couple. Uh, Port Adelaide's been linked to Joe Berry. The Western Bulldogs could possibly use one as well. And all those teams have picks towards that back end of the, the team pick. So that could work into Totoli's favor in terms of getting drafted a little bit earlier. On the other hand, 
there are some other good small forwards that he would be competing with for those picks as well. So someone like an Ollie Hannaford and a Joe Berry probably present as slightly stronger options in my personal opinion at this current point in time. In my mock drafts, I've had him going to the Sydney Swans a couple of times. That is also backed up by Cal Toomey, who says, uh, well, he naturally links Richmond, uh, one of their picks from 18, 20, 23, and 24. Naturally, Richmond, with the amount of picks that they have and a relatively blank canvas, that you can probably link them to most players in this year's draft. But they do have four picks right in that range. So that, that makes perfect sense. There is also the Bulldogs. Perhaps the Bulldogs more likely with their second selection if he lasts as long as, say, a late 20s pick, which is conceivable. At this point, it would be a surprise if he gets taken before guys like Ollie Hannaford or Joe Berry, who are likely to come in those teens. And therefore, perhaps we see him a little bit later in the draft. And looking at the sort of the consensus rankings and mock drafts, he'll start to be competing with a tools who might go in this range. So I'm not 100% sure where he's going to go. I do think Sydney would be a great fit. But any team looking for a quality, creative, small forward that can run into the midfield, provide a bit of impact, and has the running capacity to play a link-up role on the wing too, that combined with his competitive nature and his desire to get the best out of himself, I think makes him a really strong prospect. So let me know in the comments, guys, what do you think of Jesse Totoli? Where do you think he'll end up? And would you like your club to potentially draft him with an appropriate pick? But for now, I look forward to your comments and I'll see you in the next one. Cheers.